Let's do something different. I'm tired of killing gods and monsters with swords and magic, so let's play another absolute favorite game of mine from the 90s. Metal Gear Solid, aka before all the weird stuff came to the series. Well, okay, weirder stuff anyway. But look, I've used swords and magic for so long now, I don't know how to use guns anymore. So, considering we're kinda a super secret spy infiltrating an enemy base completely full of people who like shooting me, so what can we do? Well, let's see if we can survive the endless onslaught of enemies without firing a single bullet. And, well, with gods as dumb as this guy, yeah, we can have some fun with this one. So, let's start right after a word from our sponsor. Me! Did you know that you can support the channel over on Ko-Fi right now? Not only do you get insanely awesome benefits like early access to videos and discounted merch, but you are also helping the future of this channel. Once we can hire DAF full-time, which is the first goal we have on there, then you guys will get not only the weekly challenge video, but you will also get two brand new weekly series so we'll go from one video every friday to one video every monday wednesday and friday we just have to hit the first goal for that to happen and as a benefit you can support as much or as little as you want on ko-fi it's entirely up to you learn more down below at the link in the description okay so firstly we're just going to fool around a little bit down here I trigger some alerts for giggles and to practice my punching skills. And then we play Ringa Ringa Rosies with the guards and just in general meme them. But then we also have our favorite guard this whole run. Why? He's dumb. I'm not being mean, by the way. He is genuinely pretty dumb. Just watch how we get past him after all. Now, at this point, I want to clarify our rules. The only thing we can't do is shoot a gun. This means stuff like grenades, etc., are totally fair game, which we're going to grab some of now on the heliport. This is chaff grenades on the main helipad, and then some stun grenades in the hangar on the left. And make no mistake, there is going to be a lot of alerts this run. One, because I don't really mind triggering them, and two, I am hardly a great gamer, so by all means, feel free to bully me in the comments about my insanely unamazing gaming skills. Once we have the stun grenades, we're actually going to use one right away as we run to the vents to get inside the hangar. Enjoy some terrible rat infestation, which should absolutely lead to Wells disease. But hey, we're a super soldier and pretend it doesn't exist. And yes, we totally skipped the SOCOM pistol. Hey, we're doing no guns this run, so why bother picking it up, right? Anyway, inside we head straight to the elevator and head down a floor where we're magically going to skip the first third of the game with something known as the vent glitch. This is going to allow us to skip a bunch of bosses like the Ocelot fight, Tank fight, Grey Fox, Psycho Mantis, and Sniper Wolf 1. Great, now we don't need to shoot to sneak past those bosses. We just skip them entirely altogether because they're scary. So, to do the vent glitch, you need to partially crawl inside the vent until you can only see Snake's top half. Hold triangle and look up to the ceiling and then let go and press X at the same time. When done correctly, you'll be standing inside of the wall. And then we can just run all the way through to the torture room and trigger a cutscene by walking in the doorway. We don't get to skip the torture itself though, sadly, so we're going to give up because we have no idea who this Meryl person is, so why should we care if she dies or not? And I will admit, this took me way more attempts to do than I care to admit publicly. But now, we just carry on chilling in prison for a bit. And when Johnny has to run to the toilets, we play some hide and seek and hide under the bed. There's no reason for this. It's just funny seeing his reaction. There's really nothing to do here, though, other than wait for Articon to come and save us. We do have a torture scene, though. As I said, we're totally giving up that I'm a lover, not a fighter. And I sure as heck can't survive any torture. Even if Ocelot decides to just call me out for being a coward. Eventually, Otacon comes and gives us some ketchup. I know, amazing, right? Well, we're going to put Snake's legs through the door since, as we discovered not long ago, 
walls and doors are just totally optional in this game. Kind of like shooting right now. Anywho, once our legs are through the door, we're going to use the catch-up and make it look like we've bled out. By putting Snake's legs through the door, then when Johnny opens the door to check on us, we stand up and we'll be right behind him, allowing us to grab and choke him out. Let's also ignore the time paradox that causes for now. Then we just run inside the torture room and grab our clothes again. Okay, now let's run down to the basement floor here as we're going to grab a sniper rifle. We're not going to shoot it or anything, we just want it for something really nice later. And can we just pretend I didn't fall to my death here in the most embarrassing way possible, please? I also get greedy and try to do this without using my stun grenade, and well, it cost me as I get another game over. I guess speedrun strats are a thing for a reason, right? Well, turns out I messed up the speedrun strat as well, so I just do my own thing instead. So I choke out the first guard, run around the block, and inside grab the PSG-1 while avoiding the invisible lasers, and then run back to the elevator before any of the guards are any of the wiser. Then we go up to floor 1 where we head out through the corridor into what would be the tank boss, but hey, we skipped that. There are a bunch of mines around here as well, but we can safely avoid them as well by just running over the center of the tank tracks in the snow, which, by the way, I totally failed at. It's cool though, so I pick up some grenades and move on to the next screen. Here we get a full heal because the game thinks we beat the tank, so not only does it increase our maximum health, it also increases the amount of grenades we can carry. But hey, this room's full of nukes, so we can't shoot. I mean, we weren't doing that anyway, but, you know, sure, I guess. So we just run through, grab some shaft grenades and normal grenades, and climb the stairs to the second dummiest guard in the whole game, who we're just going to ignore and call the lift to head down to B1 floor, where we head to Mantis's room. But hey, we skipped this boss as well, so we get to just run through. And remember, walls are totally optional in this run so ignore the bootcase in the snowfield i equipped sniper wolf's handkerchief which we got during the torture and this smells like her so the wolves leave me alone look i don't mind beating and strangling humans but how could i ever hurt such majestic creatures and i also want them to love me so it is what it is i'm afraid in the next area i kind of hope for some stun grenades but nope only psg1 ammo now, we're going to run up to the door, and before we go through, we're going to throw a stun grenade. This will take out and stun the guards that should come up behind me. Inside, we're going to grab some stun grenades, and then as we climb the infinite stairway to hell, we're going to throw a stun on the floor 5 and floor 7 to knock the guards out, and then when we get to floor 8, there's a door here, and we're going to skip through it with something called the Boba Skip. How do we do this? Well, we use an animation from some damage to actually clip us through the door. To do this, we're going to lean on the door and head over to the far left of it. Then enter first person and align our map in the corner with the line on the wall. Once that's done, we're going to hold a chaff grenade or a stun grenade until it explodes in our hands. Then it gives us one of two damage animations. And luckily, we got it first try. I actually cannot believe that worked, but hey, it did, so awesome! And that means we skipped through the door and avoided the repel section. So let's head into Comp Tower B and grab the Stinger. Then head all the way down to the bottom of the tower to grab a story flag. This is where there's a little cutscene and Snake shouts damn. And now we get to abuse another glitch to skip another boss fight. Now, this is called the Weapon Glitch. And forgive me, I'm going to do a terrible way of explaining this, so please don't lynch me. But effectively, we're going to trick and really confuse the game. We're going to equip our ration and a grenade. Throw the grenade and prone out. Then change to the chaff grenade. Now, when the grenade explodes and damages us, we want to hold triangle to go into first person. And while doing that, we press L1 to unequip our item and start spamming the left analog stick in all directions and pressing R2 and L2 rapidly. We're essentially going to confuse the game to make it think we're still in first person view, and we're not. 
and this means we can equip the stinger and run around with it equipped, which is normally not allowed. And all this is to skip the high D fight at the top of the tower. Now run back up to the top with the stinger equipped and cook a grenade that we're actually still holding. Then when that explodes, it deletes the stinger from our inventory. And then we skip the conversation with Otacon and the boxes are moved. Now we just head up the stairs, chaffing the cameras as we go and climb the ladder to go towards the high D fight. But we don't leave the door. Instead, we go back down the ladder and all the way down the stairs. But now the boxes are back because the game thinks we don't have the stinger. So we want to lean on the left wall and position Snake's knees with the stairs and go from holding left to down. What we want is for Snake to be on top of the boxes. However, I'm an idiot and didn't let go of down quick enough and ended up walking straight off them. So let's try this again. Sadly, I fail and fail again. Eventually though, the stars align and I managed to not walk off the boxes. And again, this is a trick I really don't dare admit just how long it took me. And likewise, how many times I ran off the boxes. You're all ready going to laugh at me, so I wouldn't I would at least like to keep some dignity. Well, try to anyway. But once we're on top, we just run over to the left and fall 10 stories and be perfectly fine because MGS1 has no fall damage. Great. And now we skip the four stealth soldiers in the lift as well. So now we get to just run through into the snowfield and trigger the sniper wolf to fight. But we can't shoot, so it's time for another glitch. This time around, we're going to use the weapon glitch again and abuse the death wall in this area. Now, we don't have the stinger anymore, but hey, we can use the PSG-1 for it as well. So what we're going to do is just run a little bit forward to trigger a cutscene, and now we want to equip our rations and equip our grenades. Go prone and crawl forward. We're going to take damage here and get pushed back, just like if we blew ourselves up. So when that happens, just like before, we unequip our item and spam buttons while in first person view. And when it works, we can just walk forward through the death barrier, which marks us as beating Wolf. Okay, but now we need to backtrack. So head back into the tower and go into the lift. Go up to floor 9 and go grab the stinger. And now we just head to the blast furnace and we're now officially in disc 2. Now, in blast furnace, I was absolutely cheated by the crane moving left and right. So we'll pretend that didn't happen as well. And the best part about this, with all these pretends, Daff isn't editing this, I am. Which means no memes bullying me. Second attempt, I do it even if it takes longer. Throw one guy over and then through the door we go. On the cargo elevator, the way speedrunners do this section is by throwing them off the lift with quick throws, which you do by throwing and then re-equipping your chaff. Well, I get one semi easily. Second takes a few attempts, although I am getting shot a lot. And the third, well, I mean, I, I eventually get him over and that's what matters at the end of the day, right? If at first you don't succeed, then try, 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 and try about 50 more times. Eventually it will work, or he'll just die from brain damage. One or the other way though, both outcomes are okay with me. Now though, we have yet another elevator ride, and then it's time for Raven. So we're going to equip our rations and just run straight into him with grenades cooking. Might be a little suicide bomber in style, but I have three lives worth of rations technically, so I'm like half a cat. We get to abuse iframes, and honestly, given how this fight went for me when I did MGS1 Extreme mode on stream a few months back, well, it's nice to cheese him, since all we need to do is stand up, hold square, get hit, drop a grenade, and profit. Although I did mess up and hurt myself with a grenade a few times, which does way more damage and i also got hit a few times without dropping grenades so i ended up using all my rations 
not ideal for a player of my insanely amazing and absolutely most terrible skill levels. At least we can get another ration from inside Raven's boss, uh, boss room. And now we're getting there, guys. We have nearly completed MGS1 without firing a single bullet. We just have about two more hours of codec calls, a few more bosses, more codec calls, and then we get to finish off with even more codec calls. Seriously, you can't take two steps in Rexy's hangar without getting a call. And now, we get to the point we need to get our pal key back. Here's the thing, you think all those alerts earlier on were because I'm bad? I mean, they are, but there's also a reason. You see, if you have 11 or more alerts, the pal key will always be in the water. With 10 or less, the rat will have it. And while there is still 7 different locations in the water it can be, at least we don't need to mess around trying to find and kill a rat. Of course, though, it's in the last place I look. At least I got some rations and a bomb for my trouble. Okay, I throw the bomb away, but still. Extra rations are great for me. And now it's just a case of going back to the control room and using the pal key at the normal temperature. Once that's all entered, then we leave Rexy's hangar and go back to where we fought Raven. We need to sit in that ice room for a total of 61 seconds for the key to change to the ice form. Once it has, return to the control room and enter that. With two down, we just need the heat key now. So it's time to return all the way to the blast furnace and you guessed it, chill there for 61 more seconds to change it to the fire key. And shocker, you guessed it again. We need to return all the way back to the control room. The only difference is when doing the fire key, the room we battled Raven in has soldiers now. They're easy to avoid though. When heading to the furnace, go on the left side of the middle row of boxes, and when going back to the control room, head on the right side of the middle row of boxes. But once all three keys are done, we get trapped in the room and it's filled with poison. So quickly codec call Otacon to come and save our sorry butts, and then just hold a breath and relax. Well, as much as you can do in a room that you can't breathe in anyway. But once a short time passes, Otacon opens the door for us and we can get out and chase down Liquid. But now we have an insanely huge problem. Metal Gear Rex. C4 doesn't hurt him. Grenades don't hurt him. And if we had all the other weapons like we're supposed to, well, they wouldn't hurt him either. And there is no way to skip him that I could find. I've also spoken to a few different speedrunners for MGS1 and asked them. However, they also don't know a way to skip Rex, which sadly means challenge failed. You cannot complete Metal Gear Solid 1 without shooting, as the only way to defeat Rex is with shooting the Stinger. So, okay, we know it's impossible to do it shotless, but what's the minimum possible amount of times you need to shoot to complete the game? Well, Phase 1 Rex takes one shaft grenade to stun him and then six stingers on its radar dish to end the phase. Then we have a nice little cutscene with Frank where he gets squished like a bug. Phase 2 again takes six shots to take down, but I technically missed one so it technically took me seven so total shots so far is 12 minimum but i'm bad and it took 13. after rex were thrown right into a fist fight with liquid you can actually cheese this fight by tapping circle in a rhythm where snake only does a normal punch punch combo and doesn't do the kick this way you can effectively stun lot liquid the entire fight i tried it Failed terribly and lost tons of health though. Man, speedrunners make this fight look mega easy. It's crazy just how difficult that timing actually is. Oh, and Meryl died because we gave up at the torture and Snake beats himself up over it. I don't know why we've technically never even met her this run since we skipped everything to do with her. After this, Otacon is trying to hotwire a car while we get shot a lot by some soldiers. So we're going to grab the first one and just drag him to use as a meat shield. But now sadly, this entire section as well is also entirely mandatory to shoot bullets. As you can see by me just casually sitting here getting turned into Swiss cheese because I'm not shooting. We're just casually losing all our health. So 
It's all about doing it in as minimum amount of shots as possible. Sadly, there are some guards we have to kill, and likewise, some barrels we need to explode to open up the path for us. The guards take two shots each, the barrels take three, then we have two barrels to blow up for another six shots total, and then we have a final three guards who need four bullets each. And then at the end, we have the last chase sequence with Liquid, which we have to hit him a total of 12 times to trigger the end of the fight. And the Liquid one took an insanely long time to get. Liquid dodges so much, so often, and there's a phase where pillars end up in the way as well, needing 12 shots all on target without him dodging or getting a bad hitbox took days. I love MGS1, but I now hate this last car section with a unbelievable passion. There is so much RNG in this last little bit, it's unreal, trying to keep the number down to a minimum. But hey, in total, we needed five shots for the first car sequence, six more for the two barrels, 12 more for the three guards, and finally, 12 more for Liquid, for a total of 35 bullets during the car sequence. And before that, we had 12 stinger shots for Metal Gear Rex. And so, the absolute minimum amount of bullets required to complete Metal Gear Solid is a grand total of 47. Not gonna lie, a small part of me wishes that was 42 just for the memes. But that's going to be it for this week, everybody. Remember to smash that like button, drop a comment, and subscribe ready for next week's challenge.